Welcome back, everybody! Wait, who are you guys again? I think I forgot. Oh my gosh, why am I doing this again? What? What? Who, who are you people? Where are? Where am I? What am I doing? Tell me! Wait. Oh, never mind. Okay, I'm sorry. No, it was it's her who's lost her memories, not me. Never mind. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. I got my memories back. I'm fine. I'm okay. My name is Apollo Justice, and I'm fine. Wait, that's not right. Who am I again? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I came back here because I thought I might remember something. Oh, really, Kay? I didn't know that. Could you again go over what you told me before? Excuse me. Mm. Um, well, it was raining, so I stood under the cherry tree to take shelter. And then, a red... A person in a red raincoat appeared. A person pushed me and I fell. Can you tell me anything about the person in the raincoat? I'm sorry, I don't remember that much. No, wait! As the person approached me, I saw the moon just over their shoulder. The moon? And the moon was right there right now. Yes, that's right, it's just a faint memory, but... I think the moon was in the exact same spot as it is now. It was floating just above the cherry tree. She could see the moon behind the figure in the raincoat. How does that... wait, what? That doesn't make any sense. K moon. K saw the moon behind the person in the raincoat. It's in the same spot tonight. That nothing's... Uh, what? So, hmm. Does that mean she saw it from behind the stand then? And therefore, oh. Uh, this is a new piece of testimony. I'll be sure to keep it in mind. Hmm. Indeed. Recollections. Mr. Edgeworth, for a while now, I feel like I'm on the verge of remembering something. What? Is that true? Well then, please speak freely. Say whatever comes to your mind. Um, okay. I remember a faint scent. It was a wonderful smell coming from the counter of a food stall. I followed the fragrance only to find a perfectly sculpted burger resting on two golden buns. Oh my gosh, you're gonna make me hungry! Why, Kay? The tender and juicy patty made my taste buds sing with joy. Yes, I can remember what I thought at that moment. I want seconds! I... I don't think this memory has anything to do with the case. Or does it? Tell me about yourself. You called yourself the Great Thief Yadagarasu. You pride yourself on being a noble thief who steals the truth. Do you remember anything about that? Well, hmm... Aha! Uh -huh. Maybe I was called a noble thief because I won the Nobel Prize. That's Nobel, not noble. And they don't give prizes for thievery. Or do they? Maybe they really do and you don't know that, Mr. Edgeworth. Do you ever think about that? Ugh, excuse me, can I do any logic right now? Railing person, Ranko came over the stand and pushed Kay over. Where was Kay standing? Kay testified that she remembers the standing under the cherry tree. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna hold off on that for a moment. Just a moment. Maybe there's something I can do with that, maybe there isn't. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Okay, good for you, Edgeworth, good for you. This appears to be a live news broadcast, and they haven't moved at all in the last 20 minutes. In other words, what we see on the screen is from... is how the Grand Tower looks at this very moment. Does that mean we can be seen on the TV too? No, the camera is too far away and it's too dark to see us clearly. There's no need to worry, even though it's clearly the lights on top of the roof right now. But sure, why not? It certainly would be bad if Kay were to be seen on TV right now. That would be true. That would be very true indeed. Oh, nothing to say about the text. I see how it is. Uh, what about the clock? Nothing to say about the clock? I mean, nothing weird about them being red or anything? Nothing like that? Uh huh. Well, what do you got to say about the word live? Nothing? Nothing at all? Alright, what about this? We're seeing live footage from the 50th floor. The investigation will continue through the night. The 50th floor? Isn't that the meeting room of the PIC headquarters? 
That's right, we can see the shadows of the investigators behind those blinds. It looks like they are still investigating the meeting room. As the reporter said, you can see the investigators' shadows moving around. I literally cannot, actually. Hmm. There is a huge contradiction in this image. I should present that piece of evidence. What? You should present that piece of evidence. And that piece of evidence is... I don't see it. I literally don't see it. What if I present? Three-pronged candle opera thought to be murder weapon matches the victim's chest wound. The gear I rendered the VIC mini room was in the victim's possession. The findings of the corner... A key card record for the PIC meeting room. Touch check one for details. Victim. Okay. Well, what? That's not it. That's not it. That's not it, or is it? Promise we'll get back to your most precious memory, okay? Yeah, that's not it. And this wouldn't be it either. So, what would it be? I don't see that answer either. I don't see that either. I'm having a minute. Wait. Is it possible? Is it possible that this is the 50th floor and that's the 49th floor? Would that be the contradiction, perhaps? Gosh, I don't know, actually. I'm really confused. But he's making a, a fuss about this, so it must be something about that, right? Alright. You know how many floors this building has? Of course, 50 floors, right? It's about the place where the PIC conducts their practically illegal cover-ups. Couples are wishing for love. Kinda ironic, don't you think? So what's the dark area about the 50th floor? Maybe it's the Tunnel of Love. Those are always dark, eh? The viewing platform we're on now should be directly above the PIC meeting room. However, the late night investigation is taking place two floors below us. This is a clear contradiction. Was there a mistake in the pamphlet? No, no, rather... It's more natural to assume this building is a hidden 51st floor. Is there a 50... Is there a floor 51? There seems to be a 51st floor between the 50th floor and the rooftop. It seems that way, doesn't it? I see, so that's where the Tunnel of Love is. Ah, she's so pure and gullible, it's breaking Uncle Ray's heart. Then why don't you take this opportunity to be more serious for once? You just don't get it, Miles. I joke around to make things easier for you. On the contrary, painful jokes only make things harder for me. Or do they? Or do they? <laughs> well, now what? I mean, I apparently have to logic something, right? So... I guess let's see. The person in the raincoat came over from the stand and pushed Kay over. Kay testified that she remembers standing under the cherry tree. There seems to be a 51st floor between the 50th floor and the rooftop. Okay. Kay saw the moon behind the person in the raincoat. It's in the same spot tonight. Hmm. I'm gonna connect those. There's a clear contradiction in this logic, you know. I can't see a clear connection between these two pieces of information. Well, if that's not the truth, then what then? I need to think this over one more time. Well, just in case the game over off this randomly, I suppose, let me save real quick. <laughs> because I don't think I have saved it all in a while, and I don't want to have to redo all that stuff from the previous episode and beyond. Because that'd be terrible. Middle part one. Oh my gosh. We have actually reached the middle already. What the heck? I'm calling Hex. Prison Rainco came over in the sand and pushed K over. Would it be that? Maybe? No. Hmm, the pieces don't quite fit together. Okay. Uh, the railing and the moon? I don't know. I'm confused right now. Oh my gosh, why? If I recall Kay's testimony, 
I mean, I knew what we were going for here, but it just seems like I didn't present the right logic, the right logic somehow, and I don't understand why. A person in a raincoat approached her from behind the candy stand. There's times where I really wish I could just use my words and be like, "Hey, this is why there's a contradiction here." Can you connect the proper things together now so we can be like, yeah, let's advance properly without a penalty, shall we? Mm. But nope! Then this person supposedly pushed Kay over the railing, opposing the stand. Moreover, Kay said she saw the moon over the person's shoulder. However, earlier I confirmed that the moon is floating in the opposite direction. And on the night Kay lost her memories, it seems the moon was in the exact same spot. Therefore, the position of the moon and the person in the raincoat don't match up. Her memories have probably become confused. After all, had she actually been pushed over the railing, she couldn't have survived the fall. Perhaps I should question Kay's memory of where she fell. Where Kay fell, Kay probably did not fall over the railing. Are you sure about that? Then how'd she lose her memory then? I mean, maybe she just... I mean, there's survival stories of people falling from ridiculous heights and living. So, I mean, why couldn't Kay have done the same thing, but just lost her memories? I don't know. Anyway, uh, where was Kay saying where Kay fell? Kay probably did not fall over the railing? Hmm... She could not have fell out of the tree, could she have? I don't know. Did I get any organization organize your stuff? No, I did not. Uh, okay, you have anything to say about what you what we just found out? No, nothing. Okay. I suppose that's fine. What's up, Ray? Nothing. It's too bad. Kind of wish you did have something to say about that, but that's fine. That's fine. Uh, all right, back to logic then. Let's do uh, that and that. I don't know. Yay! I didn't know that. I didn't think it was gonna be right, but you know, it's good. Kay was not pushed over the railing on the side. After all, if you fell from here, you wouldn't even be alive in the first place. Like I said, Edgeworth, there's miraculous stories of survival, you know. But, I'm certain I was standing under the cherry tree. If I fell, then the only place I could have fallen was over the railing. Well, maybe the ground just opened up from under you and swallowed you up. The ground here can open up? How? No, no, it was just a joke, Kay. Please don't take it too so seriously. No. Strange as it may sound, that may actually be the truth. Even if it's only a small chance, it matters not. Let's try searching the area around the tree. Hmm. Alright, I'll check the tree again, I suppose. Kay could not have fallen over the railing. There must be something around here that proves it. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking looking cranny. Well, that's a trap door. Uh... Flower petals are scattered all over the ground. The blossoms are not yet in full bloom, so the strong winds up here must be the culprit. Personally, I'd appreciate if they spent a little more effort cleaning those these petals up. I mean, if these petals were happening all the time, I mean, wouldn't that be kind of annoying to clean it up all the time too? I don't blame at all for doing that. Uh-huh. Well, that's like literally the only thing I can look at, so... Besides like the petals. This is... It looks like a maintenance hatch. Kay, maybe you fell down here? Fell down the hatch? Did Kay fall down the hatch beneath the cherry tree? Maybe? Nah, just kidding. There's no way something like that could happen. I'm sorry, I just can't remember if... No, that was just a joke. No need to take it seriously. Right. So, when should I take you seriously, then? When indeed? <laughs> well, if you jumped into Uncle Ray's arms... Mr. Shields. Heh, <laughs> come on, Miles, it was just a joke. A joke, you know? Well, I get it, no one ever takes you seriously. Ouch. That stung a bit. Or did it? Well, actually, before I do that... Let me make sure that's everything. I already checked this area early, but it never hurts to take another look. Alright, we're good to go then. It is time for logic! <laughs> Fell down, and is there a floor 51? Oh! There you go. An extra floor between the 50th floor and the viewing platform. 
Why didn't anyone notice it? Normally you'd notice it. I mean, how can you hide an entire floor? That is where the problem lies. No one noticed something that should have been easily noticeable. In other words, it must be impossible to access the 51st floor through normal means. I see. Maybe it's a secret portal or something. Portals? Please now. Okay, now is not the time to be thinking with portals. Oh my gosh, can we just... Uh, or is it time to be thinking with portals? I have no idea. Maybe it is. I'd like you to recall the hatch at the base of the cherry tree. Isn't it normal to assume there's a room on the other side of the maintenance hatch? Heh <laughs> Uncle Ray likes where you're going with this. Let's hurry and check it out. There we go. Now let's see. This is... Looks like there's a lot of stuff down there. Is this what they call a storeroom? There is no doubt about it. This is where Kay fell down. Of course, and with this, the mystery is solved. No, not yet. We still have the mystery of the person in the red hood who was walking in mid-air. Now, now, let's not get greedy, shall we? We found the storeroom, so let's wrap things up here. I suppose. You have a point. Hmm. It does seem to warrant an investigation. Investigation complete! Yay! It's been completed! Well, if it isn't Miles Edgeworth, is it Francisca? Well, if it isn't Miles Edgeworth! Oh. Dang it! Is that... Oh, it is Emma. Uh... Emma, what are you doing here? I heard about the case from Detective Gumshoe. Scientifically speaking! Since I was already in the area, I thought I might as well check out the crime scene. This girl's name is Emma Skye. She's a high school student studying in Europe to become a forensic scientist. She's the younger sister of my former boss, and a witness in one of the trials two years ago. Detective Gumshoe told me everything over the phone. He sounded really upset. He said you lost your badge at the Grand Tower, and Kay became a... became a mummy. Please calm down. I thought you left for Europe just a few days ago. Don't tell me you've come back already. Yep, and I brought my teacher from abroad too. He needed an interpreter, so I volunteered to help. If your teacher cannot speak English, why aren't you with him right now? You can still communicate with people. Don't underestimate the importance of body language. That doesn't really count as a language. But enough about that. What happened to Kay? Is she alright? My, my, what a good friend. Isn't that great, Kay? Yeah. Um, who are you? And are you Mr. Edgeworth's new assistant? <laughs> On the contrary, my dear. I'm Ray Shields, head of the Edgeworth Law Offices. Edgeworth Law Offices? Well, wait, you mean like defense attorneys? Wait, huh? Oh, wait. Mr. Edgeworth, when did you be suddenly become an attorney? No, it's not like that. Now that I think about it, it is a rather complicated working relationship. Don't sweat the details, let's start with an introductory hug. When did you become a defense attorney, Mr. Edgeworth? Hey, don't just ignore me. Because I don't approve at all. Uh, hmm. Well, why don't we continue this conversation down below? That's right, the police should, could arrive any second now. Mr. Edgeworth, who's she? I'll explain later. First, we have to go down the hatch. Ah, okay. Guess I'll be joining the prosecute er, defense team? I'll explain about that too. Well then, let's go, go, go to the storeroom. To be continued, middle part two already? Oh my, I feel like this case is actually advancing really fast right now. Is it just my imagination? I honestly have no idea. Maybe it is my imagination, maybe it's not my imagination, maybe it's like, whoa. This is okay, I suppose. April 5th, 7.06 p.m., question mark, 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 and you know, lots of like question marks and stuff like that. It's pretty dark down here. I can't see a thing. It's making me very thirsty. Mmm. Mmm. 
Delicious water. I that was so good. I that really hit the spot. If I do say so myself. Watch your footing, Emma. Ouch! I think I hit my head. Head. Okay, be careful not to slip. Take your time coming down. Ah, uh, okay. Hmm. The light switch should be somewhere around here. Oh, she did get the jam and injured in the mask here. Oh gosh, it's one of those I fly suitcases. Are you freaking kidding me? What the freaking heck? I mean, isn't this totem pole one of those freaking things from the first game too? What is this? What is this thing? Oh gosh, this case is weird already. This is the hidden fifty-first floor. Is is it being used as a storeroom? <clears throat> Excuse me. I actually want to. Well. Actually, who am I kidding? It's going to be middle part two. I was going to say, I want to check and see what part we're on right now, but I mean, obviously, if it says middle part one, it's just going to be middle part two, so I suppose no point checking right now until we get to the next one and see if it's middle part three or if it's end part one. But anywho, we'll need to investigate the, it thoroughly. Grand Tower pamphlet data updated in my organizer. Contains a cross-section of the towers and an overhead view of the platform. Touch check one for details. Mr. Edgeworth. Please tell me about the case. Scientifically speaking, of course. Right then, where should I begin? Well, you can begin with other things, of course. I see, this is certainly a serious situation. Why does she look like she's having so much fun? <laughs> Looks like you're in a bind, prosecutorial attorney, Edgeworth. I'm not a defense attorney, nor is there such a thing as a prosecutorial attorney. This looks like a job for science. Don't you worry, I've got everything here in my bag. Are you sure you're up for this, Emma? Of course! So once again... It's good to be working with you, Mr. Edgeworth. And I'm glad to be working with you as well. Looks like we've got ourselves another cute assistant. So what's the plan? It looks, looks pretty suspicious to me. Uh... huh. It... Looks like it goes down? I am curious as well. But first we should investigate this room. Okay, if you find out anything, be sure to tell Uncle Ray. And if I remember something, I'll let you know. Yes, please do, Emma. Roger, I'm ready to support. Well then, let's begin the investigation. Begin investigation, Grand Tower 51st Floor Storeroom. Okay, so Emma's our assistant right now, huh? Alright, alright. Well, anyway, now that I know how this works, I guess it makes a little more sense. I was a little confused, because it was like... I honestly thought this was going to be like... Don't ask me why, but I thought... Where the PIC was before, was like I thought it was like floor 50. And I thought the one below that was going to be floor 40. And I thought the one below that was going to be floor 30. And then, you know, stuff like that. I thought I don't know why, but I thought it was going to go in floor in 10 floor increments. I literally don't know why, but I did think that, so... Eh, whatever. It is what it is. I thought some weird things about that. And that's all we got. But I want to check my profiles real quick, because we got a new profile to add to things here. Emma Sky, age 18, gender female, high schooler, studying in Europe to become a forensic scientist. Emma, you should really stop while you have the chance, because you're going to be very bitter towards everyone in the future. Ask me anything you want! Hmm... Well, first of all, let's, uh, present some evidence. This is Kay's badge, right? Yes, this is her precious badge. But she doesn't seem to remember it herself. Is that so? Hmm... Maybe it doesn't have enough impact. How about I customize that, ba that badge a bit? And spruce it up with little pink ribbons and white feathers! I appreciate the offer, but... Let's keep it like this for now. Kay's memories would only become even more confused. Yeah, probably. Scientifically speaking, I'd have to say that the details are unknown. So in plain English, you don't know anything about it, right? It's not that I don't know, it's just that the details are unknown. Uh-huh. They're unknown because you think they're unknown. And you're like, whoa, I can't believe how unknown they are! Nothing to say about purple flowers? Oh man. What about the pamphlets? No, nothing? Oh my gosh. I wonder why Kay lost her memories. Maybe she saw something really shocking. 
Indeed. She seems to have gotten herself involved in a murder case after all. I also went through some pretty scary things in the past as well. But thanks to my sister and everyone else who saved me, I can be who I am today. Mr. Edgeworth, we're definitely going to save Kay, okay? Yes, of course. That's probably gonna happen. Scientifically speaking, I know nothing about how candelabras are made. Or how key cards are made. How do they work? And clearly there's some kind of science involved in it. It just works. I guess that's all we really need to know. Alright, uh, nothing to say about this, huh? I mean, it's kind of similar to the case you were involved in, anyway. But, anywho. That's all we had to say, huh? You notice anything? Since Case is suspect, I can't just stay silent. Feel the same way. For now, we should calm down and search for clues. No. After thinking it through scientifically, I've come up with an even better plan. I'll just give Kay an extremely powerful electric shock to her head. And see if that will jumpstart her memories. Um, well, that seems a bit... No, quite dangerous. I prefer to go with my proposal to calm down and investigate this room. Is that so? But in science, a bit of danger always comes with the territory. <laughs> she looks so sad. That's not exactly what you would call a bit of danger. Or is it? I came back here for a while as my teacher is a translator, but normally I study in Europe. That's right, to become a super forensic scientist. That's admirable. Endeavoring to learn is the duty of a student. Yes, in order to excel in both academics and athletics, I've even taken up sports. For example, the competitions they have during sports day. Oh? I wonder what sort of competition she's referring to. Unlike America, Europe has extremely tough manly sports. And... Well, I'm sure you've heard of the War of the Eyeglasses, at least. No... I've never heard of it before in my life. The heck is that supposed to be, Emma? My gosh! The freaking heck are you even talking about right now? Alright, uh... Okay, let's talk to you. Yes? Can I help you with something? Okay, looks like you can't help me with anything, actually, so... Oh, actually, wait, 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 wait. I do want to present one thing real quick. I want to present the pamphlet again. I'm terribly sorry, even if you give me that... I STILL DON'T REMEMBER ANYTHING ABOUT YOU! <laughs> Alright, so that's a no. She has nothing to say about that, and so everything's gonna be slow again because of reasons, so... Alright, Ray, what's up? Oh man, Uncle Ray's heart is pounding up a storm! Surrounded by so many cutie pies in such a small, cramped room? Mr. Shields, please try to be more serious. <laughs> it was just a joke. Uncle Ray's keeping a close watch over little Kay. So you can continue your investigation without worry. You watching over Kay is exactly what I'm worried about. Oh, lighten up, Mr. Edgeworth. Just lighten up. Hmm. I wonder. Where should I start? Oh, maybe the elevator's important. Ah, uh, not the blue badger! Freaking get that thing out of here! What's this? It looks like... A giant head? If I recall, this is the head of Miss Monkey. Mrs. Monkey. I believe it was from a case I was involved with in the past. Sadly, I... can't say I really re know what that case was. It's impressive how they were able to get such a large object in this room. Hmm... This is Monkey, huh? That doesn't really have a nice ring to it. Maybe you remember the name wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. No, Impossible! That can't be true! Or is it? Aw, nothing about the Blue Badger, I see how it is. Uh, what about this? There's a huge stack of money piled up here. How unrefined. They're all $100 bills! Talk about big bucks! Big bucks? Stacks of cash found in the storeroom? A big deal went down here. Oh, yeah? I'm surprised that's even logic, but okay. So, how many times your yearly salary do you think this is worth? Leave my salary out of this. I'll let you know this is way more- this is way less than my salary. I make a lot of money. I'm a pros- I was a prosecutor after all. Wow! I got bad taste. I've never seen such gaudy desk before. As what kind of person would you use something like this? The tabletop is being supported by four naked men. The design is quite painful to look at. 
Certainly is in poor taste. Maybe this is also related to one of your past cases? No. None of the cases I handled involved a person with such bad taste. Or at least I hope not. Well, you never know, Edgeworth. You never know. There's a trend receiver sitting next to all these trophies. It seems like they were lined up together on purpose. Looks like it's still got batteries in it. Might come in handy later. So I'll pick them up for now. I'm sure to put it to good use before I turn it into the police. That sounds just like what a certain great thief would say. Oh my gosh. Could they be twin sisters? I had no idea that Emma and Kay were related. My gosh, who would have guessed? Scientifically speaking, this must be a wooden icebox. This chain is tied around it to keep the cold from escaping. Probably. No, Emma. Wouldn't this be a costume trunk? It's made from a wood from wood that repels bugs in order to protect the clothes inside. Ah, I see, of course. That's another possible theory. A game theory, of course. Ah! <laughs> If your clothes are stored in a cold place, it'd be nice and cool, nice and cool to wear in the summer. I guess she's sticking to her icebox theory. Yeah, why not? Why not stick to it, right? These are. Uh huh. I can't say I necessarily recognize this stuff, but eh. What is it? The items displayed on the shelf here, if I recall correctly. We'll see what Edgeworth recalls correctly on the next exciting episode, everyone! Oh my gosh, what could these items be? Because to be honest, I don't remember that well. But on the next episode, maybe we'll see and find out what these things are. I'll see you all later, everyone.